My name is Armin Kretzinger and welcome back to our course on the fundamental teachings of Christianity. One topic that is considered a bit controversial is the topic of creation and evolution. With creation, we mean that God created all kinds of life and the earth perfect in six literal days by the creative power in his word. With evolution, we mean that theory where very simple life forms developed over millions of years through natural selection and genetic mutation to where and what we are today, more complex life forms. For those who understand the creative power of God's word and studied the evidence for the creative power in God's word, it should be no real problem to understand that creation is true. If a being can walk on water, come back to life from the dead, accurately predict future events in advance and heal all manner of diseases by speaking the word only, then it seems that that being would have no problem to create our world. But usually those people who don't believe in creation but instead believe in evolution, they do not know and understand about the creative power in God's word and the evidence for that. They haven't necessarily seen the evidence for the supernatural. And so they try to find natural ways to explain life, etc. And this makes sense to a certain extent, because they are working within the framework of what they know. So I think the very first step is to investigate the supernatural and the evidence for the supernatural and the creative power in God's word and the evidence for the creative power in God's word. This is what we have done in other lessons. That is a very important step that we should not neglect. It will really help to broaden our perspective. That does not mean that the Bible is anti-science. In fact, there's very useful information that we find in the Bible about quarantine, washing under running water, etc. And you might really benefit by searching up about that. We also know that there were great scientists like Sir Isaac Newton, who not only believed in God, but also believed that God was the creator. So how can we understand and explain what many people believe to be science that seems to be contradicting the Bible narrative. Two useful websites if you are interested in the science behind creation and evolution and also want more info about science in the Bible is www.answersingenesis.org and also www creation.com. These two websites are very useful to help clear up misunderstandings that people have about science and the Bible. Just like there are Christians who say they believe in creation, but they don't know why God created or how God created. So there are also those who say they believe in evolution, but they're not really able to explain it to other people. Sometimes we believe in either creation or in evolution just because of culture and what other people have told us. And that is not a really solid foundation to stand on. We want to understand it for ourselves so that we can be able to explain it to other people, especially when people ask us why we believe in creation or why we believe in evolution. I think that these two websites have very, very useful information that is important to check out. And obviously we're not going to have time in this video to cover all of that information but we are definitely going to be mentioning some of those important things. Alan White wrote in the book Education, page 128, Science is ever discovering new wonders, but she brings from her research nothing that, rightly understood, conflicts with divine revelation. The book of nature and the written word shed light upon each other. Inferences erroneously drawn from facts observed in nature have, however, led to supposed conflict between science and revelation. The Bible is the book of divine revelation, and science is the book of nature. God gave us both, the Bible and nature. And if we rightly understand it, then they will always be in harmony. So sometimes we might look at a Bible passage and come to a wrong conclusion and think that it contradicts science. Or we can look at scientific data and then interpret it incorrectly or have wrong assumptions and then we think that it contradicts the Bible. But if we understand the Bible and science correctly, then we will find that they are always in perfect harmony because God is the author of both the Bible and science. So those who believe in God and those who believe in evolution, 
they can look at the same data and the same archaeological findings, but they might have different interpretations of the data and so they have different conclusions. For example, radiometric dating relies on certain assumptions in order to be true, and there are some who disagree about these assumptions. And then we also need to take into account the rapid decay of carbon-14 compared to other isotopes. We also need to think about magma and what the conditions were like on Earth before, etc. And then soon we might realize that things aren't necessarily as simple as lots of people make it out to be. Just because most or all scientists agree about a certain interpretation or conclusion, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's true or false. We have a lesson on how to find truth and how to investigate for yourself to know what is true. Personally, I am someone who really loves science and I like reading scientific literature and scientific studies. I really thank God for the knowledge that he's given us about nature. It was actually in 2018 when I had the opportunity to visit the Cradle of Humankind in Africa. It is a UNESCO World Heritage Site with limestone caves where they found Miss Pless in 1947. It is called the Cradle of Humankind because it is where more than a third of those early fossils were found before 2010. So I had an opportunity to enter the caves and, and see some fossils and go to the museums and see the info and it was a really fun experience. There I could see that the ape to human graphs and models and other reconstructions are really just artwork based on imagination and presuppositional influences. All the supposed ape men can actually be classified as either apes or men, not any transitional forms. Some people might also wonder that if God created everything perfect, why are there certain life forms that look like it has bad design or vestigial organs or junk DNA? There are some structures that seem to show less than optimal design. And to some evolutionists, this shows that there must be no creator. But we need to remember that a world that has been affected by sin and degeneration for 6,000 years will not remain in optimal design. The fact that we remain to survive just shows how amazing the original design was. Christians also believe in adaptation. Because of sin and degeneration, adaptation has taken place over thousands of years. And Christians also understand that it is impossible for adaptation to lead from one kind of animal to another kind of animal. So some say that Christians believe in microevolution, but not macroevolution. Basically meaning changes on a small, limited scale, but not changes on a big scale from one kind to another kind. Christians believe that things are generally getting worse, not better, because of sin and degeneration. So please check out these websites www.answersingenesis.org and www.creation.com. And I would like to share with you some reasons why some scientists reject Darwinian evolution. Mutations are random, unpredictable errors that cause crippling diseases, loss of function, and the destruction of the person or animal. Mutations destroy species. They do not improve the species. Sickle cell anemia might have some benefits, but it is a problem and causes issues. Mutations can cause variation within the same kind, but there is no evidence for mutations leading to an entirely new kind. Secondly, the fossil record has no intermediate or transitional forms from one kind to another kind, but individual species and kinds of life that went extinct. Just like certain species or certain kinds of life go extinct today. The Kulakanth fish was said to be transitional until it was found alive and mostly unchanged in December 1938 in South Africa. Thirdly, for every so-called beneficial mutation, there are way, way more destructive mutations. The fossil record shows no evidence for the other thousands and thousands of creatures which had negative mutations and went extinct. They might point to some here and some there, but in relation to those with positive mutations, those with destructive mutations should be way, way more. Point number four, Creatures are locked in their DNA code. One kind cannot evolve into an entirely new kind, example from a mammal to a bird or from fish to a bird. The DNA in dogs have many recessive traits. A desired trait can be produced in dogs by selecting dogs with a particular trait to produce offspring with that trait. Many different dogs can be developed, 
but they can never develop a cat by selectively breeding dogs. The beak of a bird can change shape, but it will always remain a bird. And point number five, the number of chromosomes in DNA is consistent within a kind. Deviations cause problems. Dogs have 22 chromosomes, monkeys have 54, cats have 38 and humans have 46 chromosomes. Offspring between those groups will usually be sterile. Another book that I recommend reading is How Evolution Flunked the Science Test by Amazing Facts, which is available for free online. I think that our first step should be to investigate the evidence for the creative power in God's word. And then we should look at the data that we find through the science, look at the different interpretations of the data, and find harmony between what we see in the Bible and in nature. There are things that's called science that is not science, but it is falsely called science. Instead, of relying completely on human knowledge that's been wrong many many times about scientific matters, we need to look at the scientific data and rely on divine knowledge, rely on the author and creator of science. Alan White wrote in Christ Object Lessons, page 107, the Bible is God's great lesson book, his great educator. The foundation of all true science is contained in the Bible, Every branch of knowledge may be found by searching the word of God. And above all else, it contains the science of all sciences, the science of salvation.